Hey everyone, Shadow here, and welcome to another Marvel Contest of Champions video. So in this video, we're going to be going through Variant 7, Chapter 3, and the second quest. So it's the final quest of the entire Variant 7. Alright, so by this time, you really should be familiar with the global nodes, but we're going to go over them uh, one last time. And you see that revive, we're not going to take that path, but I'm going through each path to uh, take a look at the uh, nodes because I want to find out which one is the easiest path for completion. That is my goal, uh, not to pick up revives or anything like that, but to show you guys the path I consider the easiest. So, of course, I have to go through uh, each path and take a look. Now, you may find another path easier for you based on your roster, all right? But I have my own recommendation for your initial clear, all right? And what path I'm going to choose is the last one that you just saw. All the way to the left, it is the breakthrough path, okay? So, first, let's talk about the globals. You have a global called Pursuit of Justice, okay? That global will reduce all attacker damage by 95%. However, hashtag hero champions ignore it. So that means if you bring in a non-hashtag hero champion and you try to fight with them, it's going to be a long fight and it's going to be annoying. Okay, now you can still bring in non-hero champions on your team for synergy purposes, but make sure that synergy is worth it because you'll also miss out on some of the benefits of bringing in hero champions, not just ignoring that damage reduction, but also there's a global called teamwork. So teamwork says every single hero on your team will increase your ability accuracy by 10%. That means, for example, here, where we're fighting with Hyperion, his stun, which has a chance to fail, will proc more often. It'll, it'll go off more often, okay? Uh, and that goes for any other hero that you bring in if they have abilities that trigger on their attack and you know they have a chance for it not to apply this will help that is why you saw me bring in the team that i brought in so i have all heroes and i have a nice uh 50 boost to my ability accuracy all right so those are the two globals that you uh want to be aware of and those globals are in the entire variant we talked about them a little bit in prior uh videos that we've done but i wanted to you know go into them uh, a little bit more all right now this path has two nodes that you want to be aware of now it has more than two um, you have that great responsibility and great power thing. Uh, if you are bringing in Spider-Verse champions, then read up on that. It gives you a little bit of a benefit. I ignore it. I ignore it completely. Uh, it doesn't really matter to me. The ones that matter are the Strike Back, which will give them a bar of power if you hit them with a special. Now, in the case of uh, Cosmic Ghost Rider here, I can get away with firing a special because it power locks them, okay? Uh, now, I'm still not familiar with uh, Cosmic Ghost Rider, still learning him, but he did okay here, all right? The other node, and this is the node that, for me, makes this path very, very easy and why I chose this path as the easy path. And that is breakthrough. 
So with Breakthrough, your defender starts with, you know, a good amount of defense, okay? However, as you can see up there, see that little red icon with the uh, shield that has a crack in it? It's up to 10 right now. The more you hit your opponent, the harder you will hit your opponent, okay? So even a four star eventually will hit really hard. Everyone is gonna hit really hard. Now with a four star, you're gonna to have to, you know, be more careful because you're gonna be taking more damage, more block damage, that sort of thing. But as long as you bring in good counters for each of the fights on this path, uh, if you know how to fight each of the opponents on this path, you're gonna have a good time, all right? You can see how Hyperion just ripped him apart, okay? So that's basically it, all right? Each of the opponents here uh, are not terrible to fight. Uh, this Mysterio, he might cause you a little bit of grief. Uh, I don't know what they did to his AI, but he loves firing heavy attacks off. Now, I went in here with Cosmic Ghost Rider mainly because I know that Cosmic Ghost Rider uh, does armor breaks. And so I was thinking, okay, this should be okay. Armor break him, and uh, we don't have to worry about a lot of his, uh, you know, abilities. All right. Now, uh, you do not want to hit him when he fires his special one. You want to wait out that buff he gets because if you attack him, any damage you do during that time period is going to get reflected back to you. So that's why you saw me just dancing around, parrying him, that sort of thing. Now, I didn't actually want to hit a special three there, but it worked out okay. So you see he has uh, six armor breaks on him right now, and he's up to like 22 of the breakthrough uh, debuffs there, okay? And so you can see here, I'm hitting fairly decently, but you can tell I'm not really that familiar with Cosmic Ghost Rider yet. Still getting some practice in. I'm also running suicides. So every time I'm firing the special off, even if I'm not getting hit, I'm still taking recoil damage. All right, so <clears throat> most of the damage that you saw me taking right there, you see, I didn't get hit at all. That was from either block damage or recoil damage. <clears throat> okay. Next up, we've got Doc Ock. Now, Doc Ock, look at his fingers. I don't know why they did that. It just looks so creepy. Uh, but Doc Ock can cause some trouble if you are dazzled by all those arms, which I was early on. I had to learn to kind of ignore those arms somewhat uh, because it was throwing me off. When I was trying to go to parry, I was trying to parry the arms and it just was not a good time, okay? So uh, my basic strategy in, in fighting Doc Ock uh, is to bait out his special ones. Uh, with Hyperion, I wanna fire a lot of heavy attacks. They're multiple hit. So uh, I'm gonna be hitting harder, faster with Hyperion. Remember, even if you do not have a five-star Hyperion, a four-star will do. You know, the fight will go on for a little bit longer and you have to be a little bit more careful. But if I were fighting right now with a four-star, I'd be taking more damage, yeah. Uh, I might want to play it a little bit differently. Um, you know, for example, I may intercept a little bit more, you know, to try to reduce some of the damage. Now, right there, I didn't want to deal with his special two. I've evaded his special two, but I'm not 100% confident in evading his special two, which is why I normally bait out his special one. So uh, we got through that. Hyperion is, yeah, he's in decent shape. Okay. Uh, now we're going to face Carnage. 
All right. Now, keep in mind, by the way, that we want to do this itemless. No healing, no revives. So I've been using Hyperion to do the heavy lifting. Now, something that a lot of people uh, may not realize is that Hyperion can heal. I don't really use it a whole lot here, but he can heal. So if he gets those celestial charges, that's the yellow icon that you see over there. He needs three of those. When he gets three of those, he hits much harder, by the way. Uh, but also you can dash and hold block and you will proc a regen. And uh, that regen, it's a weak regen, but it lasts a long time. Now, you may hear people wonder whether to awaken their Hyperion. He doesn't need to be awakened. But awakened, and there you go. I just used his uh, regen. Okay. Now, as you can see, it's a weak one, but look at how long it's lasting. The higher Hyperion's Sig ability, the longer that buff will last. Same thing with his Furies. So it's actually beneficial to have him awakened and at a high sig, but he doesn't need it, okay? You see how I was dancing around because even block damage, you know, will, you know, decrease the gain of health uh, because it's not, you know, a, a big, big health uh, regen, but it helps out. And we finished the fight with more health than we started. So, again, it makes the fight go a little bit longer because, of course, I had to do the regen and then I wanted to play around, wait out the regen. Uh, if I were to get hit, that would just basically take that and, and you're done. You know, it just basically wastes all the time that you spent trying to get the regen. But it's a good regen. All right, we're at the boss. Final boss here, Miles Morales. You can see here, Enhanced Special 1. So if you can evade that special one, you'll have a good time. His special one deals more damage. That hard knock life is annoying. Every time you block, uh, do a parry rather, uh, you're going to get that uh, Disorian on you. Yeah. But if you know how to fight Miles Morales, you shouldn't have too much of a problem with this fight here. Okay, so I went in with Hyperion. Now you see that he evaded. He has five evade charges. So while he has those charges up, any charge, right now he has three left. See, see how he's evading? It went down to two. You do not want to do full five hit combos. Now, something else I noticed, of course, since I was parrying, uh, you see there I, I evaded the uh, special one. Uh, I have these disorients on me, so I'm taking a lot of damage. Look at this, I haven't gotten hit and I'm already down to 46%, all right? And you can see here I'm hitting, all right, now, he has no more evade charges, so he cannot evade any longer. That, this is where you want to get him. Now, if you fire a special off, then he's going to get all those charges back. So at this point, what I want to do is fight him pretty much like normal. Okay, build up my Furies. That's why you don't see me firing off my special three. Okay, but just look. Look at the damage. 13k crits. All right, and for the most part, I want to push him to a special two. His special two is much easier to uh, evade than the special one, but I can do both. All right, you see, every time he hits me in into my block, you see how much damage I'm taking? It's because of that uh, debuff I have on me from parrying him all the time, okay? But we're getting close here. Woo, evaded that special one like a boss. I got 11%, woo, another special one evaded. Okay, 11% health, and I don't know if I'm going to make this, okay? So I'm just like, all right, 7%. This is getting dicey here, okay? But he can't evade, all right? I did another parry. I'm down to 5%. He's down to 5%. Pushed him to a special two, evaded that, and we're going to go for it. Can we do it? Will it knock him out? And boom, shaka lock. He's done. A one shot with Hyperion. Barely got him, but we got him. All right, guys. So hopefully this 
helps you out when you do your initial run. Again, it can be done with four stars, that breakthrough path. You want to bring someone for the uh, boss here. You saw that I use Hyperion. You can actually use anyone that you want. But certain champions may help you out more. Normally, we would bring in uh, Venom. But no. All right. Uh, Venom is, is not a hashtag hero. So he's not going to be good for that fight. But fortunately, if you know how to fight Miles Morales, you're good. All right. So that's going to do it, guys. Thank you all for watching the video. Uh, hit that like button if you enjoy it. While I'm talking here, I'm just going to show you guys what I got from that four to five rank up gem. And if you've been following me, you know that I've been getting a lot of a particular class in resources. I had a ton of them in my overflow. So you might guess what the RNG will give me for my rank up four to five gem. All right. That's going to do it, guys. Thank you all for watching the video. Feel free to hit the like button. Leave a comment. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed to me already. And you all have a blessed day.